How's it everybody? So today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the basics of color grading. I'm going to be taking a scene that I shot quite a while ago about a surfboard maker and all this footage will be downloadable once this is live and you can take a look and grade it yourself. It's all shot on the Pocket 6K with Blackmagic RAW. So let's dive into how to do a basic color grade. So I'm going to be doing today's color grade on the CG319X reference monitor from Azo. Azo was amazing enough to send us this monitor to do the grade on our documentary, The Last Horns of Africa. And now that that's done, unfortunately, this monitor is going to have to go back. But the time that I have spent using it has been incredible. So as you guys can see, we've got seven shots here that make up a really short little sequence that are all pretty well matched. There's nothing overly mismatched about them. They're all from the same camera, all with the same settings. There's obviously different lighting conditions as the light change during the day, but it's nothing that's overly challenging. And this is why I selected these shots is it's a pretty simple grade. It's a good place to start. So the first thing I normally do is I approach it from a balancing perspective to start with and I really do like using the uh, curves tool and as you can see on the bottom we have the uh, shadows and then up top here we have highlights so the first thing I would normally do is uh, bring that down to what I would think is a good uh, shadow amount and do the same with the highlights maybe just about there I will add a few little nodes or keyframes whatever you want to call them and this is so that I can have a lot more control of this particular part of the grade. You know, I want to be able to select very particular parts of the frame to give more contrast to it. And as you can see, I make little minor adjustments and you can just adjust and see how it feels. And you see there's not too much change there, but you don't want to go and overexpose the image. Let's just adjust that there. Now what does sometimes happen is you have a shot that is, uh, let's say, a little bit overexposed. Let's do the highlights here. As you can see here, it's uh, very blown out in that area. Now there's a uh, little selection tool here called the high soft and high sliders. And what this does is basically just even out the highlight range. As you can see there, as I slide it across, it just sort of blends it and makes it a lot more pleasing to the eye. So it's a nice little tool you can use when you have overexposed parts of your image that you can't recover. But luckily, this is on the Pocket 6K, so we are in Blackmagic RAW and there's quite a lot of latitude in the highlights and shadows. So I think that's a pretty good starting point for this particular clip. And um, then what I'm gonna do is just correct the temperature of the shot and that's just so that we uh, have a good balance to begin with and you're just correcting your image getting it to a good starting point let's do ever so slightly minor corrections and then you can just uh, have a look at how far we've come and uh, let's give it a little more on the uh, contrast range is another good exercise is to make sure you play your clip through because obviously the first frame and the last frame could potentially be very very different all right that seems pretty pretty good and uh, we're going to do the exact same with the uh, next image going to do that same contrast ratio with the highlights and shadows and we'll add a few more of these little points so we have more control and uh, so what I am doing here is I'm not referencing this frame up here. To my left, I've got the Azo CG319X, and that is my reference monitor. That, that's what I'm watching to make sure that the image is looking correct. And on my right, I've got my parades, so I can see exactly what's happening to the image. I can monitor whether or not it's gonna be overexposed or underexposed in areas of the frame. So we just make ever so slight adjustments. We wanna 
give a good amount of contrast in this image. Just uh, crush it there. Oops. Let's bring that back. That looks pretty good. And now what we want to do is we want to go back and forth and see the two images. So clearly there's a bit of a discrepancy there. The uh, image is not quite looking the way it should. So what we want to do there is uh, go back to this original one and just give it a little more contrast just about there. And the other thing you'll notice is that the colors are off. So we've got uh, quite a lot of reds coming through here and this image is quite blue. And we want to match the two. So we're going to take that tint, bring the blue, the temperature slider down, and we can just adjust, adjust on the right there. And uh, now we're getting a lot closer to the two. And we're going to do the same with this clip. Let's bring it down and crush it there. Bring these highlights back up a little bit. Create our little points. I'm just doing random points here, just by the way. Um, I just want to create quite a few so that I can control very, very specific parts of the image. So you'll see that it's just controlling those shadows. And this one is a different portion of the image. And as we get higher up this line, we're getting closer to the highlights. So it's controlling different parts actually go a little bit low there and you can see we can actually add a bit of punch just from this portion of the uh, curves tool let's not overexpose anything just in case we can bring that high soft slider up just a little bit and again we want to bring that uh, balance down so we're getting a more natural looking image to start with this is just the starting point this is just to match the clips and get them at a good point to start with and you can see here, all three are looking pretty good. I'm going to do the same with this one. Now you'll notice on this image, the windows are blown out. And uh, there's not much you can do about that. But what you can do is make them ever so softer. Just about there. Do the same. Put a bit of blue back into it. Bring up that pink and that red. That seems about right. Yep, there we go. As you can see, I'm doing this by eye. Um, but what you can do is actually just watch the parades on the right hand side and you'll be able to uh, keep track of your red, green and blue. And you'll be able to have a far more precise uh, control of, of what you're seeing. I'm just doing it by eye because it's it's I'm used to I'm used to it. This one's a little trickier because as you can see here we've got a very strong highlight on his shoulder, big bright windows, and he's actually being cast in shadow with some light bouncing off the surfboard onto his face. And that's where the uh, light from his cheeks are. It's coming from that surfboard, it's bouncing coming right back up. So we want to bring a bit of that highlight back. We do want to make sure that the uh, contrast ratio is correct to match the other images. And that's getting pretty good. We can uh, bring that detail back up in his face. And there we go. And uh, let's bring the uh, bit of blue, bring a bit of life back into his cheeks. Getting quite close. And uh, oh, as you can see there, I'm not concentrating. So I've gone and accidentally done the uh, corrections over the look tab, which is fine. We can copy that, paste it on balance, and then just reset that node grade. And we are on the same. We just need to change the uh, label to balance again. So just making sure that these do match. Might need to bring a little bit of pink back in there. And that's looking good. And again, same for this one. Bring that highlight back up. Now this one is a lot trickier. As you can see here, his shirt again is the uh, brightest point of the frame and his face is actually quite dark. So once we start adjusting 
we might it might seem like his face is uh, in a lot of shadow, which it is at this point. But what we also need to remember is that this shot is changing over time. And we can see that as the shot continues, it moves around and comes around to his face. So what we might want to do there is actually just uh, make sure we're not losing too much on his face. We can uh, bring that up. As you can see there, that little portion of the uh, curves is quite nicely doing that. But we do want to go back and make sure it isn't changing anything else too much. And uh, let's change that temperature. <clears throat> so that's a good uh, base to start all of these from. It's just a good starting point for all seven of these shots. So what I can do now is actually add just a little bit of contrast to the image. Just to get it looking. There we go, it's looking great. Just to make them pop just a little bit more. We can just make sure that this image isn't too dark, which it looks like it is. So we can actually take that contrast off and leave this one as it is. It's looking great. Let's get the uh, mid-tone. Extra bit of contrast. I like to use about 20. And again, we can paste those onto that mid-tone. I'm sure there's a much quicker and simpler way of doing this, but this is just the way that I do it. And uh, let's move into the saturation. Now, now we're going to bring the color back into the image and we can take it back down from there. So I always start at a base of 70 with the saturation. It will seem a little bit oversaturated for some of these shots, but that's the point. So now you can see a lot of the colors being brought back into these images. But what's nice is they're all matching. And this is a really good process to start with, is to just make sure that you match all your images to begin with before you start doing an actual look on the, on the image itself. You want to make sure that the shots in the scene match and that they all look the same. So once you start adding a look, all you're going to be doing is copying and pasting it from one to the next and then making minor adjustments on it as opposed to finishing each shot as a complete grade because then you're going to be going back a lot more and back and forth way more than you should. Now, as you can see, doing seven shots, it's pretty quick to get it to a good base point. And um, now we can at least start with the look itself. There's a few ways that you can approach a look. You can still go back into the curves and, and do those adjustments through there. But what I like to use are the primaries bars. And uh, here in the uh, offset tab, you'll be controlling the entire thing. And you can see if you want to add red to it, green and make blue adjustments. I think for what I'm going to do for this is add a bit of blue to the image so we can uh, bring that up there. I want to remove a bit of the green, possibly even take out some of the red, give it quite an interesting look. And uh, by clicking on the number five or on that side there, you can actually switch that particular node on and off so you can see. And as you can see that's actually just a minor adjustment that's looking rather interesting. And I'm not going to be doing too much to these images. This is not an overly graded shot. This is still needs to look lifelike. It is a micro documentary about a surfboard maker, so you don't want to go too stylized. You want to make sure that it still looks real. It must just look really good. And if you do decide that you want to remove anything you've done in any of these bars, you can click that little back selection there and it will take out any adjustments that you've made and set it back to zero for the particular column that you're working in. And I think that's looking pretty good. You know, it's not a huge amount of adjustments, but it's taking out some of that uh, red and uh, giving it more the daylight look. We can paste that to that. See, it's a very minor adjustment. And do the same there. And you'll see on this shot, it's gonna actually have quite a dramatic uh, change to it because of the colors that we're dealing with. There's a lot of the the, the dust in the air and it's it's not as much red so you'll see as we paste it there it all goes quite blue which is nice same there make his jeans a little bit more blue and uh, as we rotate around here now what I have found here with this particular shot is it's looking good there it's looking good there but 
this shot doesn't seem to match as well as it could. So what we might do is just bring back a little bit of that, the red, just a hint. So when we do rotate round, see as you can see, this is not matching at all when we go around. It's quite a lot darker and different. So what I think we might do is go back to the balance. Let's bring up some of these highlights, this highlight scrolly wheel. And I'm going to sacrifice the highlights on his shoulder to make the shot work. We can uh, save that. And I know there are techniques in which you can selectively pick the highlight section and, and do all of that. But it is going to be a little more complicated because of the nature of the shot. It is rotating around. And it is just not what I want to show you right now. This is a very, very basic grade. Let's not overcomplicate it. Let's just make sure that in the sequence it works. What we can do there is add a little bit of the shadow to bring back. And I can take some of these highlights down. And don't be afraid to have some blown out highlights. It's not a problem. If it works for the shot and it looks good, that's all that matters. That's looking great. looking very very nice all right there is one more adjustment that I'm gonna to make to this and if you come to the top here you've got two selection tabs here this particular one is for your shot node selection this next one here is for the timeline nodes so what I've done is I'm adding a bit of sharpness to the entire thing and what this does which is really really cool is it actually adds sharpness to the entire timeline as opposed to adding sharpness or any adjustments to each individual clip this type of uh, working will save you a lot of time. If there are overall adjustments that you know are going to work on every single shot, rather do them in the timeline selection. And I'm doing the same for the grain that I'm going to be adding, which is from Film Convert. And I have selected the Blackmagic design. I want to use the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, adjust that. And what I have done is taken the film chroma down because I don't want that to be part of the image. All I want is the grain itself. And if you want to keep some of the contrast that comes with this particular film stock, you can. You can keep it all up there or you can slide it back down. I don't want it to be that contrasty. And I'm going to slide that all the way down. But what you can see here is that the grain is being added and taken away. There it is. And that's a really, really handy tool when you don't want to make the adjustments to the each individual shot and you want to make them to the entire timeline it's a really nice simple way of adding an adjustment to everything so there's other things you can add on here if you want to do uh, a look that that changes everything all in uniform way this is the way to do it go to the timeline node selector and you can add that over the top of everything what i might do is just make a little bit of that Film contrast, come back a little bit, and there we go. As you can see, when you sometimes just scrubbing through everything and seeing if anything stands out too much, you'll know. But I think that looks really good, and we can have a quick look at what it was before, and where we started, and where we are now. What I will do also is uh, export this particular grade as a lookup table. And I'm actually going to show you how to do that right now. Once you're happy with the particular look that you have for the shot that you're working with, you can very simply right click on the uh, little frame itself and you can go generate 3D lap 33 point cube. And I use that for my pocket cameras as well as the G1 and G2. And you can call it, um, you know, surfboard man look. And I've created a lookup table. You can import that into your camera, put it on there and use it. And that's how you create a LUT, as simple as that. 
All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this really basic grading session with me and doing some minor matching and then a slight look on the images, keeping a very naturalistic look. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.